praise ye ah oh, praise y'all praise uh <laughs> praise ye the lord praise y'all praise god in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness praise him with the sound of the trumpet praise him with the t uh timbrel and dance praise him with the stringed instruments and organs praise him upon the loud cymbals praise him upon the high sounding cymbals let everything that have breath Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Amen. I see you changed that up. <laughs> A different um, uh, version. Okay. Using the, the names of the of the Most High. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. The so subject today um, is seek Yah. Seek uh, the Most High God's and in um, Isaiah 55 and 6 and, and I'm sorry I didn't give you that list of scriptures but uh, we're going to go from Isaiah 55 and 6 and then the next one is going to be Acts 319 so you'll have both of those scriptures but um, let's see Isaiah 55 6 says seek ye Yahweh while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near and so um that's that's what he wants us to do he's asking us to to call upon him to uh he's opening himself you know up to us calling on him and to seek him to look for him and that was one of the things that he wanted um for um you know the people way back in 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 Egypt. You know when he drew them out of Egypt, so that they can get close to him. Um, and that was Isaiah fifty five and six. The next one is going to be Acts three nineteen. And um, and from Acts three nineteen, I'm going to uh, go to First Chronicles chapter sixteen verses eight through twelve. And uh, so when I look at uh, Acts 3.19, you know, this, this scripture here is talking about repentance. And so when, when, we, when we approach the Most High, you know, we, we need to go with a repentant heart because nobody is perfect. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the Most High. And so Acts... Um, 319 is is telling us you know to uh and in fact it says and i and i'll i'll just read that uh repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of yahweh and so um you know he's telling us here to repent and and then to to be converted you know to to go from our evil ways to go to uh the ways of the most high and so uh and that means we need to not just um uh do the deeds but we have to fix our mind and our fix our heart to follow along with the will of the most high god and so um you know so this is what it's telling us to do but then when we do that he says that it's a time of refreshing you know just from being in his presence we can be refreshed by just being in his presence all right and so um in first chronicles 16 verses 8 through 12 i'm going to read that in just a minute but um king david was was um giving he said to to give thanks and to sing and to and the glory in um in in yahweh's holy name and he's talking about seeking his strength the, the strength of yahweh and he's talking about um uh remembering the marvelous works and and the wonders of the most high and so um you know he said he's also telling us to remember the judgment of his mouth so um we'll read in fact let me go over here um first chronicles chapter 16 uh verses 8 through 12 
Um, and so, uh, let me, let me, let me look at that. First Chronicles, first Chronicles 16. And all right, first Chronicles 16 verses 8 through 12. And some of these I have written out, but, um, all right. Let me put my, my spectacles on. Uh, all right. Verses, starting at verse 8, it says, Give thanks unto Yahweh, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. So when we call on his name, you know, we already, we, we, we have seen his wonders. We have seen his marvelous works. We've seen so much about him. And we don't, we shouldn't keep it to ourselves. We need to testify. We need to share what he has done for us. And in fact, this morning, uh, I was listening to um, a CD. Yeah, I know that shows my age, CDs, but it's better than an eight track, okay? So, um, <laughs> um, but uh, they were talking, they had this song that they did years ago uh, called Testimony. And um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the group, but uh, Zion's Joy. Joy. Zion's Joy, yeah. And um, they did that song called Testimony. And it was just, I, I'm just thinking about that, how we need to share what the Most High has done for us. Because a lot of people, um, a lot of people don't have hope. And a lot of people just don't really know. And they go through uh, day by day um, just, go, just existing and not living. And so... Um, we need to share those testimonies with them. And so he said, Oh, give thanks to Yahweh. Call on his name. Make what he has done known among the people. That's, that's in verse 8. And in verse 9, he says, Sing unto him. Sing psalms um, unto him. Talk you of all his wondrous works. So we need to talk about those wondrous works. Uh, in verse 10 he says, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek Yahweh. And so when we are seeking him, we are seeking him with a, a heart of rejoicing because we, we know that um, you know we're going to have that time of refreshing with him. And so in verse 11, it says, Seek Yahweh in his strength. Seek his face continually. Okay, so we're supposed to um, always have that um, uh, attitude of prayer. We want to also, you know, just always be aware of him, who he is. Be aware of his presence. Because he said that he would never leave us or forsake us. So we know that he is always with us. And so in verse um, uh, 12, he's telling us to remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and his and the judgments of his mouth. So we're supposed to also remember those things as well and those judgments, all right? Um, and judgment is, is two words. Um, uh, part of it is, um, you know, consequences. Judgment involves consequences. But also, judgment uh, can mean justice. Justice. And so, we're to remember those things. We're to remember the consequences when we, um, you know, do the wrong thing, when we stand against him as opposed to standing with him. But we also need to remember the justice that he establishes for his people it may seem like in fact um the scripture says uh in psalms weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and so 
you know, it, we may be going through some things, but understand that the Most High is going to provide justice for us. He provides justice for his people. And so, um, you know, those are things that we need to remember. Um, Isaiah 26 and 9 is the next one. And he says, with my soul. And in fact, um, this was when, uh, when the Ark of the Covenant was was going in to um, into the tent. You know, King David was bringing the um, had had this tent uh, of the meeting where they were to worship, and he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant in, and he was so excited, and everybody was rejoicing. And in Isaiah forty six nine, he says, "With my soul, I desire thee at in the night. Yea, my spirit within me." Will I seek thee early? For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. You know, sometimes people think that because they're enduring some chastening, that the Most High is against them, that the Most High doesn't like them and hates them and, you know, wants to destroy them. But that's not the case. He chastens those whom he loves. And so when we un in endure or go under, um, the judgment of the Most High because we have, you know, done something we shouldn't have done, you know, because because of sin, um, that lets us know that He does love us. And so instead of, you know, hardening our heart even more, we need to just submit ourselves to Him. And um, because in that, it's in that place where He's teaching us. And so, um, you know, we, we, we need to, uh, you know, realize that those judgments, those consequences are teaching us um, how to be more righteous in him. There's another scripture that says, um, uh, talks about the, the, the presence of the Most High. It's, and, and, and we have to realize there is joy in the presence of, of the Most High because of repentance. You know, that repentance I mentioned earlier brings refreshing. And so, um, uh, when, and I had mentioned about, uh, well, no, I'm, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But anyway, um, you know, so we, we, we in, have that uh, repentance and the joy that He gives us, and that just strengthens us all the more. So that we can continue on the joy of Yahweh uh, of his spirit is our strength all right so we seek him also when we make decisions when we need to make a decision uh, we need to seek his face and so um, an example of that and is 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 found in Ezra and I'm going to go to Ezra chapter 7 verses 10 through 6 and um, let's see, Ezra comes after Second Chronicles, Ezra 7, chapter six, uh, verses 6 through 10. And this is when uh, the seventh year of King uh, Artaxerxes, um, you know, in his reign, Ezra was a scribe in the law of Moses, and he was given permission to leave Babylon and to go uh, to Jerusalem or, um, you know, yeah, uh, Jerusalem, we, either way, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, and so in Ezra chapter six, 7, verses 6 through 10, in fact, um, uh, I'm going to read, well, yeah, let me read that. I got so much and I'm, I'm trying to condense it and say everything that... Um, you know, I need to say. But anyway, it says, This Ezra went up from Babylon. He was skilled, a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which Yahweh, um, the, the, the Most High God of Israel, had given, and the king granted him all his requests according to Yahweh, uh, his God's... Uh, hand on him and so um, so anyway 
the Most High had his hand upon Ezra. He he gave him uh, a, a task to do, told him what he wanted him to do. And uh, in verse, uh, let me go on and continue reading. And there went up some of the children of Israel, of the priests, um, the Levites, the singers, the um, the porters, the net. Uh, Nethans Neth, uh, Nethans the Nethans into Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king and he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month which was the seventh year of the king and upon for upon the first day of the first month he began to go up from Babylon on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, according to the good hand of Yahweh um, on him. And so um, in verse 10, it says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law and do it and teach the statutes um, and judgments. And so, uh, in teaching Israel, the statutes and the judgments or ordinances. Okay, so in verse 10, it tells how uh, Ezra was seeking the Most High. Uh, first of all, he prepared his heart. Um, he sought to know the ways in, in this passage of Scripture, okay? He sought to know the ways of the laws of the Most High. He set himself not just to know it, but also to do it. It's one thing to know it, but, you know, doing it. We got to do it. And um, and that's one of the things is, is how we uh, help others to understand it is by leading by example. So we have to be that example. We can't just speak it and uh, and not and not do it. You know, actions speak louder than words. We were talking about that earlier in Bible study. And so, you know, we we he set himself uh, to know it and also to do it. And then, and then he also purposed in his heart to be used by the Most High to teach the statutes and the judgments or ordinances. And so he was seeking the Most High for himself, but he was also seeking the Most High for other people. And so um, in, in Ezra 8, uh, and I'm going to read Ezra 8 verses uh, 20 through 23. Ezra 8 verses 20 through 23. And so in chapter 8, Ezra and then those that accompanied him, and then they list a whole lot of them, uh, by name and and um, who they were with and that sort of thing, and all of those people that accompanied him, it also included Levites and the Nethinims, Nethinims, um, and they arrived in Judah, and they together, all of them, and it was I, I don't know how many people, but it was a, a a large group of people that went with him, and they all came together in Jerusalem or Jerusalem and sought. Um, and sought Yahweh. So in chapter 8, verse 20, uh, starting at verse 20, it says, Also the um, Nethinims, Nethinims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nethinims, all of them were expressed by name. So they had a whole list. They were mentioned by name. They had a whole list of all of them. Uh, and it was 120 of them. And in verse 21, it says, And then I proclaimed a fast. So this is what Ezra did. When he got all these people together, including the, the Nethanims, um, he proclaimed a fast. And if you want to read that whole chapter, you can read all the ones that um, that went and how many went with them and it was far more than 120 I mean it was a large amount of people and so what he did when he got everybody together he said um, I proclaimed a fast um, at the river Ahava that we might 
humble ourselves before Yahweh to seek from him a straight way for us and for our little ones and for our possessions. So, so he wasn't just looking for um, something for himself, but he's looking uh, and he's seeking him for directions and, and, and making a decision. And so um, in verse 22, he said, for I was ashamed to ask um, the king of the, of the band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the way because uh, we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of Yahweh is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all of them that forsake him. And so uh, in verse 23, they came together, like I said, and he said, so we fasted and besought or, or begged uh, Yahweh for this, and, and he entreated of us. He granted our request. And so, um, you know, so he, re he granted that request, and, but they, they didn't just, you know, go in haphazard. They they sought uh, direction. They sought wisdom. They sought, um, you know, the way that the Most High wanted them to do things, rather than them deciding on their own. You know, they could have caught a meeting, put together a representative from each one of those groups, and had a committee meeting and decided what they were going to do. But Ezra. He was adamant about serving the Most High the way the Most High wanted him to serve. And so um, this is a good example for all of us. And we should, we should always seek the Most High when we need guidance, we need, when we need to make a decision, when we need to um, have a plan. Um, and so, you know, we need to always do this. This is a good example for us. Um, you know, when we have a uh, serious business decision, and a lot of times people think that if it's a business, then that's separate. Well, if you're a child of the Most High, uh, you need to include every facet of your life in regards to asking uh, the Most High for guidance, asking him to, um, you know, open doors, close doors, to lead you, guide you, order your steps. You know, all of these different things whether it's business or whether it's personal, regardless, every single thing in regards to also our families and, and um, you know, leading those in our families. It's, it's, this is what we need to do. Uh, and it's more than just um, praying a prayer. When you get ready to eat, you know how people just say this prayer. And then, um, you know, when it's bedtime, you say your prayer, your bedtime prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. You know, it's got to be more than that. You got when you when it's you got to have a relationship with the Most High. And if you don't talk to Him and then listen to Him, then you don't have a good relationship with the Most High. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And so um, that was a good example. My next scripture that I'm going to read is actually in Jeremiah 33 verses two through three, and um, and I've got quite a bit to go over, and I'm not sure that we're going to finish today. But um, anyway, Jeremiah 33, verses 2 and 3. And, um, and Je Jeremiah was known, you know, as he was a prophet. Some people refer to him as the weeping prophet because, you know, he was always crying to the Most High about things that was going on he was very concerned about his people and so uh he was he was always praying to the most high and um so in jeremiah 33 verses 2 through 3 he says thus said yahweh the maker thereof yahweh formed it uh to establish it uh, and and um, and and I want to pause right there, because when we consider what he established, he established his word. When we look at his, um, 
uh, in all creation. He established all of that because it was by his word that he created everything. He spoke and it came to pass. And so his word does not return void. Whatever he says um, shall be done. That's just how it is. So he goes on and he says um, uh, in verse 3, Thus Yahweh, uh, thus saith Yahweh, uh, the maker thereof, Yahweh formed it and established it. Yahweh is his name. And then he says, call unto me. And most people um, have heard this scripture before. Call unto me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And so um, that's, that's what he will do. We call on him. He will answer. You know, he might not answer the way we want or, or say whatever, but his way is always the best way. And so we have to trust him. And, um, you know, so we need to uh, just, and, and notice also at the end, I was going to say this, um, uh, the term God, you know, he said, Yahweh is my name, Yahweh. And so, um, uh, so when we look at his name, um, you know, he has that name that is above every name. And so instead of calling him God, um, there are many gods and, um, in some versions of the Bible, they differentiate. They have the same word, God, G-O-D, but some of them use the capital G and some of them use the, uh, for, for the most high, and then the little G, lowercase g, for false gods. But if we call him Yahweh, I think everybody knows who we are talking about. That, um, you know, or even if we say the most high, he is above all he, there is none uh, that is equal to him there is none that is above him he is the most high and so we must trust him um, and we seek him when we need help uh, I was talking earlier about his marvelous work and remembering his marvelous works and, and, and all of that and that's what we need to do remember those things and especially if you're going through a hard time you know, just think about them. Uh, Psalm 103 is a good one to go through and talking about all the, uh, the the great things that the Most High God has done for us. And so um, I'm going to go into Isaiah 50, chapter 50, verse 7 next. And so we seek the Most High uh, when we need help also. That's another time when we seek Him, when we need help. And... Um, and, and remembering those those good things that he has done, um, you know, so and, and, and doing those testimonies, sometimes when you're feeling bad and you're testifying about what he has done for you, it just lifts you up. And so just testifying and telling other people, not just thinking about it yourself but sharing it with others because then people will look at you going through all the things that you're going through and he will say and they'll they'll say well how do you, how can you go through this and and it just seems like you're okay it's because we have him it's because we trust him it's because we know what he has done and we know what he can do and so we have hope in regards to what he will do because everything that he does for us is for our benefit okay Isaiah 50 and 7 and he's talking you know uh, and, 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 and Isaiah is saying um, for, for Yahweh will help me therefore I have not been confounded you know I will not be confounded and I will set my face like a flint because I know that I shall not be disappointed. And so we set our face like a flint. And, um, and King James says, well, I will, I will not be ashamed. We will not be ashamed either, you know. And so we won't be disappointed. All we do, we just set our face like a flint. In other words, 
we are steadfast in our belief. We trust him and, and we will not be shaken. We will, um, you know, just rely on him because he will help us. We don't know when, but we know that he will. All right. Psalm 34 and 15 also talks about this, um, uh, the eyes of Yahweh. And it, and it says the eyes of Yahweh are upon the righteous. So he sees us. He sees what we're going through. If we go back into uh, Exodus and we talk about those people that um, uh, that were enslaved by the Egyptians, the Most High heard their cry. That's what he told um, uh, Moses. He said, "I heard their cry." He hears your cry. He hears our cry when we when we call out to him. He sees what is going on. He says the eyes of Yahweh are upon the righteous. They're toward the righteous. And his ears listen to their cry. So, you know, he's not ignoring anybody. He is listening and he is seeing what's going on. So we seek the most high when we have decisions to make. And we seek the most high when we need help. We also seek the most high when we need to repent, okay? Um, in the month of May, Thursday, May 2nd, it's always the second, uh, no, it's always the first Thursday in May is the National Day of Prayer. And, um, you know, even though we should always be praying, uh, we, the, the, um, in 1952, um, by a joint resolution of the United States Congress. Uh, and it, it was signed and also signed into law was um, uh, signed by President Harry S. Truman uh, that the first Thursday in May will be set apart for a national day of prayer so that our whole nation can take that day and pray. And so every year they choose a theme. And um, this year's theme is faithfulness. And they're using um, Isaiah 25 and 1 that says, O Yahweh, thou art my Elohim. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsel councils of old are faithfulness and truth all right so um you know so he he signed that thing into law back then and every first thursday in the month of may is um the time where our nation is supposed to pray all right so when we look at this though this this that's a good scripture this great scripture but this nation is on the brink of judgment. It is on the brink of judgment. And um, it's not too late to turn things around. Um, and when I think about it and when I look at this, I look at I, um, Jonah. And a lot of people have been talking about Jonah lately. And... Uh, so around 760 BC, um, the sinful city of Nineveh was about to experience the wrath of the Most High. Um, they were about to experience judgment because he was going to ex uh, execute judgment on Nineveh. But here's the thing about him. He, he's not going to just surprise you, you know. Huh. Surprise, I'm judging you. No, he's going to give warning. It's going to be signs. You're going to be able to, to see that handwriting on the wall that is coming. And he, and, he, and he does that because he loves everyone. It's not his will that any should perish. And so he gives that warning. And um, so this was true with the people in Nineveh. And so he sent Jonah. 
Now, I'm not going to read all of that in Jonah. Jonah is only like four chapters long. So your assignment, <laughs> you laughing. <laughs> your assignment is to read the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters. Read that. Um, you know, it's recorded in the Bible. Um, what was going on with Jonah? Uh, the good, bad, the ugly, all of it, everything. It's all in there. All right, and the and the and the thing about it, you know, most everybody, whether they go to church or not, they know Jonah was in the well for three days and three nights. Okay, but a lot of times, um, when they, uh, de uh, when they when they talk about this, people want to make it like it's a story, like a like a kid's story, and then they want to. In fact, I saw one where. They had they they had a picture of Jonah in the well, uh, in the belly welly of the well, with a fire and a stick trying to roast something in the fire. Okay, that was not true. He was he wasn't building a fire. He wasn't trying to cook. He was pleading with the Most High. If you can imagine inside. Of of a, of a well, you you might think that it's a big big um, area, but it's not. A well is a is, is a creature that have internal organs just like everybody else, has a skeletal structure, all of those things, and he got swallowed in there, and it was a tight fit, okay, and he was in there for three days and three nights. There's more that I could say about that in regards to uh, Yahshua being in the in 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 the grave three days and three nights. Okay, but that's a whole different message. But at any rate, so he was in there three days and three nights. It was in it was it was a close uh, close quarters that he was in there, and um, you know, so he was in there and he was praying. He he, I mean, really. So I'm, I'm going to go through a list of seven things uh, that is, is, is what happened when Jonah, uh, uh, through the book of Jonah. I, I, it, just kind of a little outline of seven things that happened in the four, within the four chapters of Jonah. All right. So here's what happened. First of all, Jonah was called to Nineveh. All right. Second thing, Jonah disobeyed. He didn't want to go. And so uh, he disobeyed. The third thing, Jonah experiences consequences for his disobedience. Fourth thing, Jonah prays. Okay, now he couldn't literally do a sacrifice in there because, uh, uh, you know, he's in cold squatters. Uh, he didn't have everything he needed, you know, all of that. So his sacrifice, and he sacrificed while he was in there. His sacrifice was with the voice of thanksgiving. He was being thankful to the Most High. And and you can read that verse in, in, in Jonah 2 and 9. But he was praying, and then he offered a sacrifice with the voice of thanksgiving. And then um, we know that he was released from the, the well, the belly of the well. And um, so then Jonah obeyed and he, you know, he, he goes to Nineveh. He's in Nineveh. And um, he says and he does what the Most High wanted him to do. And, and the sixth thing that happened, Nineveh repented. And the seventh thing that happened, Nineveh because of um, uh, them repenting, because of them listening to what Jonah had said in regards to judgment and the Most High, Nineveh is spared the judgment of the Most High and uh, Yahweh. He, they were spared. So this tells me that if our nation prays, if we turn from our wicked ways, hmm, that sounds like another scripture. <laughs> then, 
that he will hear our prayer and he will heal our land. But we need to pray. And we don't have to wait till May 2nd to do it. We can pray every day that this country will repent. Um, we have a whole lot that we need to repent of. And, um, you know, so, so it's up to us as believers and followers of Yahshua that we should be that one, that representative to go before the Most High, to seek his face and to pray for our country. But, but before we even do that, <laughs> we got to do something else. We have to repent, all right? Now, um, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But before I get to this, I want you to understand, um, you know, in regards to this country repenting, um, there are signs and wonders. Genesis 1.14 says, uh, Genesis 1.14, sorry about that, um, says, um, and Yah... The Most High God said, here's what he said. Now, remember, I was talking earlier about he spoke the word and it was so. That's all he has to do. He speaks the word and it's so. It says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament or the expanse of the sky in the firmament to divide the day from the night uh, and let them be for signs um, to mark seasons for days and for years, okay? We just recently had a sign, recently. And uh, I believe that the solar eclipse that we had on April the 8th uh, here in 2024 was a sign. It was a warning. I believe it was uh, the warning, a warning from the Most High. Um, I don't think there's any such thing as coincidence and uh, I don't believe that um, the fact that the solar eclipse crossed over seven cities called Nineveh uh, here in the United States was, you know, I just don't think that was just a coincidence. I think it was a warning. I think it was a warning of impending judgment if we don't repent. Now, I could say a whole lot more on this subject, but I'm not, um, but... Here, I'm going to close with uh, three verses and four steps to repentance. The first verse is going to be in John 1, 9. The second verse is going to be in Psalm 32, 5. And the third verse is going to be verses Isaiah 55, 6, and 7. Now, we already read, right at the beginning, we already read Isaiah 55, 6. But we're going to read the uh, 6 and 7 uh, as I go through here. But we're going to start off with 1 John 1, 9. And most people, most believers and followers of Yahshua are familiar with this. And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness all unrighteousness he is able to do that but we have to go to him we have to content, just seek his faith now i don't i don't mean that you should every every few seconds be worried oh did i sin did I, oh you know i don't want you to be freaking out about that but you know i just want you to be aware uh you know that when you sin and it's not giving you permission to sin that we confess it now when we confess it it's got to be with a sincere heart it can't just be just saying words uh, I think a long time ago it was a song in the 60s or 70s that talks about um, people that's talking loud and saying nothing you know we, 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 when we confess, that it can't be that kind of thing. You know, it has to be sincere. It has to come from the heart. It has to be one of those things that where your mind and your heart is telling you that you're going the wrong way and you need to get right with the most high. And so you confess 
our, your sins, each one of us individually confess our sins and understand that he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let's take a look at Psalm 32 and 5. It says um, in, in Psalm 32 and 5, I acknowledge, okay, so we're talking to the Most High. And we, he's and, and in fact, in this case, King David was talking to the Most High. And he says, and as we should say, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. I didn't, um, and, and mine iniquity have I not hid. You know, so I didn't hide my iniquity. I'm confessing everything to you, O Most High God, okay? He said, I will confess my transgression to Yahweh, and you will forgive. Yahweh will forgive the iniquity of my sin. He will forgive. And then it says, Selah. That means pause and think on this. Uh, I'm going to read Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. But he, he, we have to acknowledge our sin. We can't try to hide it. We can't fool him. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so we confess it. We acknowledge it. We, we, we take, um, uh, you know, we, 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 we take responsibility for it. And um, and just let him know, and he will he will uh, forgive the iniquity of our sin. He'll wash us. He'll cleanse us. You know. All right. In verse fifty five and six and seven verses six and seven, I read this earlier. It says, "Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near." Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. It starts with a thought. And then the rest of us, if we don't contain that thought, cast it down, cast it out, then our body will start to follow through. We have to cast that down and cast it out away from us. And so... It says, let the wicked forsake his ways, let the unrighteous men uh, his thoughts, and let him return to Yahweh. We have to return to him, and he will have mercy upon him. He'll have mercy on us. And, and um, you know, to the Most High God, he will abundantly, freely pardon. He will do that. All right. So now, those are the those are the three scriptures. Here's the four steps. In these scriptures, these four steps were, uh, were in the midst of these four of uh, these. Well, might as well say four scriptures, three four. Okay. The first step is acknowledging the sin. That's the first step. We have to take an account for ourselves. We have to be accountable to the Most High and acknowledge what we have done, you know. Um, and that acknowledgement, you know, is the realization that we have sinned. Okay, so once we realize it, we acknowledge it, yes, okay, I've done the wrong thing, I messed up, I've sinned, I've sinned. We confess it to the Most High. That's the second thing we do. We confess it. And so, you know, we've read scriptures. We've read the, in these scriptures about confession. And then the fourth thing, the third thing, I'm sorry, that we need to do is forsake sin. See, this is what repentance is all about, is turning away from sin. It's not just physically turning away from it, but it's mentally uh, just changing our mind in regards to it. We don't hate sin enough. We have to hate sin so much that we refuse to do it. And then we have to, in our heart, not have any desire to participate in sin. I didn't say 
that we wouldn't fall down sometimes. But that's why we have all of this other that I was just, just finished saying. And then once we turn from it, you know, then um, and, 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 and stay away from it, we know what the triggers are. We just need to uh, stay away from those things that could trigger sin in our life. And, um, you know, when those things start to happen, and sometimes you don't have to go anywhere. You could be just in, in one place. Um, in fact, in Genesis, in, uh, let, me, let, me, let me go back. I'm going to read this one scripture. And this is a good example. Uh, let me see. Um, in Genesis 4 and 7, uh, the Most High is talking to Cain. He's talking to Cain. And, and he said, um, when, when Cain was upset about the, about the, um, uh, the sacrifice that, that Abel's was received and his wasn't, he was upset about that. And so in verse 6, he's the, uh, it says, And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? And in verse 7, he says, If thou doest well, uh, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay? Um, sin is crouching. Sin is lying at the door. And, um, you know, but you're able to rule over it. He told Cain, you're able to overcome this. But Cain didn't. And so, so we have to make a determination. When that trigger happens, realize sin is lying at the door waiting to pull us in. And so we can overcome it. And then the fourth thing. We, we, third thing is forsake sin the fourth thing receive forgiveness from Yahweh receive that forgiveness and and sometimes people they'll say you know I've done all these things and, and, and I repented and I don't do them anymore but then they, they have a hard time forgiving themselves and they have a hard time believing that the most high the, the righteous one has also forgiven them he has forgiven and so we have to receive that forgiveness that he's made available we have to seek Yahweh don't wait until May 2nd for those prayers but especially on May 7th uh, pray for our country pray for ourselves pray for our loved ones there's so much that needs to be prayed for um, that scripture that says pray without ceasing <laughs> reminds me of Anna the, Anna was a lady she was a widow and I think it talks about her in Matthew and um, uh, after you know being you know, her widow you know be, becoming a widow she went to the temple and she prayed day and night she just stayed there and she prayed day and night now I'm sure obviously she you know stopped to have a meal and some to drink you know and take care of you know other things but she was constantly you know putting herself in prayer for years I forget how many years but I mean a tremendous amount of years she stayed in that temple and she prayed we should always be ready to pray in a moment's notice. You know, like if you're driving down the street and you happen to see somebody on the side of the road, they're, 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 they're stranded, their vehicle's messed up, pray for them. Pray for their safety. Because sometimes, and, and we do know of some instances where people are on the highway, their cars broke down, and they end up getting hit by another vehicle. You know, things happen. And so when you see somebody on the side of the road, pray for them. You don't have to know a person to pray for a person. 
we need to just continue in prayer. There's so many different things that come up through the day in everyday life that we need to just pause and pray. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It could be a short one. He knows what's going on, and it doesn't have to even be out loud. You can pray within. Seek Yahweh. Seek him. Seek the Most High God. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you how you are with us. Your presence does so much for us. It, it, it refreshes us. It gives us joy. Um, just, just being in your presence. And so I'm thankful for that. I ask your blessings on every person that hears this message. That they will be refreshed and renewed. And that you will um, uh, just just help them. Your spirit help them when they get to a point where, where they don't even know what to pray. Your spirit will, um, according to your word, your spirit will, will give utterance. If they open their mouth and, and, and let your spirit do so. So I'm just praying for the people that hear this message that... Um, their prayer life will increase. I'm praying that uh, we will all continue to keep our country, our nation in prayer. That we will pray for one another. That's um, also part of the armor. The, the, the prayers, the supplications, that's part of our armor that's talked about in Ephesians. And so, um, just seeking you in every area of our life. And I give you the glory. In Yahshua's name, amen. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you, whithersoever thou going. Numbers 6, what is it, 24 through 26. The blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Come